Hi everyone, welcome to Nursing Guru. As you are nursing aspirants, you may be studying or dealing with OBG, that is obstetrics and gynecology. In that, one of the most important topic that we have to learn is normal labor. So today in this topic in or in this portion, I will deal with what is normal labor, what are the normal physiology and what are the physiological changes that is taking place during normal labor and what are the stages of normal labor. So let's learn in detail. What do you know about normal labor? Let's learn what is normal labor. It is a series of events that are taking place in the genital organ in an effort to expel the viable product of conception out of the womb through the vagina into the outer world. That is what we call as normal labor. So that is the definition of normal labor. Normal labor is a series of events that is taking place in the genital organ or the genital tract in an effort to expel the normal or viable products of conception that is the fetus, the placenta as well as the membrane out of the womb that is or out of the uterus through the vagina into the outer world that is what we call as normal labor. If it take place before 37 week that is prior to or before 37 week it is called as preterm labor. And after full term or after 37, that is what we call as normal labor. That is regarding normal labor introduction and definition. Next, what are the criteria that we can accept to call it as a normal labor? The criteria include spontaneous in onset and at term with vertex presentation. Next, without undue prolongation. The next one is natural termination with minimal aids. The other one that include without having any complications affecting the health of the mother as well as the baby. Next one what is abnormal labor that is dystocia. Any deviation from the normal labor or from definition of the normal labor is what we call as abnormal labor. That is regarding normal labor and abnormal labor. Next is regarding the stages of labor. Mainly there are four stages that is included in labor that is first stage of labor second stage of labor, third stage of labor and fourth stage. These are the stages of labor that is normal labor include mainly four stages, first stage, second stage, third stage and fourth stage. So through these stage wise or step wise process actually normal labor takes place. Next let us look on in detail about what all are the stages or how normal labor takes place in these stages. First one is the first stage of labor. This starts from the onset of true labor pain and it ends with full dilatation or dilatation of the cervix. It is in the other words the cervical stage of labor. First stage is also called cervical stage of labor because at that time actually the full dilatation or dilatation of the cervix takes place. Its average duration is 12 hours in primary gravida and 6 hours in multi gravida. That is the average duration of first stage of labor. There are two phases in first stage of labor that is latent phase and active phase. These are the two phases included in first stage of labor. Phases of first stage of labor that is the latent phase is the time between the onset of labor and 3 to 4 centimeter dilatation of the cervix or the cervix until the cervix become fully effaced. That is the latent phase. The second phase is the active stage. And it describes the time between the end of the latent phase that is 3 to 4 centimeter dilatation and full dilatation that is about 10 centimeter. It is also variable in length usually lasting between 2 and 6 hours. Again it is shorter in multiparous women compared to primary. Next during active phase cervical dilatation during the active phase usually occurs at 1 centimeter per hour or more in a normal labor. So second stage of labor actually what happens here it starts with the full dilatation of the cervix and ends with the expulsion or delivery of the fetus that is actually taking place in the second stage of labor. It has got two phases. Second stage has two phases. Propulsive phase starting from 
full dilatation up to descent of the presenting part to the pelvic floor. Next one, expulsive phase is distinguished by maternal bearing down effort and ends with delivery of the baby. Average duration is 2 hours in primary gravida and 1 hour in multipara. That is the second stage of labor. So, the second stage of labor starts with full dilatation of cervix and ends with the expulsion of the fetus or that is a viable product of conception. That is the second stage of labor. It includes two phases, expulsive and propulsive stage. Next is the third stage of labor. The third stage begins after the expulsion of the fetus and it ends with expulsion of placenta and membranes. It also involves the control of bleeding. So that is regarding third stage of labor. That is actually in that stage, the expulsion of placenta as well as the membrane takes place. That happens in the third stage of labor. A third stage lasting more than 30 minutes that should be considered abnormal. If a third stage lasts more than 30 minutes, it is considered abnormal. Next is a fourth stage of labor. The fourth stage begins with the delivery of the placenta and ends two hours later. That is regarding stages of labor. So two hours later it begins, that is fourth stage. So till now we discussed about the stages of labor, first stage, second stage, third stage and fourth stage. Next, let's move on to physiology of normal labor. What all are the physiology of normal labor? Physiology of first stage of labor, that is it include uterine action, then fundal dominance, each uterine contraction starts in the fundus near one of the cornua of the uterus and spread across downwards. The contraction lasts longest in the fundus where it is also the most intense contraction occurs at the fundus. But the peak is reached simultaneously over the whole uterus and the contraction fades from all parts together. The upper pole contracts strongly and retracts to expel the fetus. The lower pole contracts slightly and dilates to allow expulsion to take place. If polarity is disorganized, then the progress of labor is also inhibited. If it is disorganized, it is inhibited. Second one, formation of upper and lower uterine segment. The upper uterine segment having be or have been formed from the body of the fundus is mainly concerned with contraction and retraction. It is thick and muscular. The lower uterine segment is formed of the isthmus and the cervix and is about 8 to 10 centimeter in length. The lower segment is prepared for distension and dilatation. The muscle content reduces from the fundus to the cervix where it is thinner. At the cervix muscle content is thinner. When the labor begins, the retracted longitudinal fibers in the upper segment pull on the lower segment causing it to stretch. This is aided by descending presenting part. If the presenting part starts to descend. Next one is the retraction ring is formed. The ridge forms between the upper and the lower uterine segment. This is called as retraction ring. After that, cervical effacement takes place. Effacement refers to inclusion of the cervical canal into the lower uterine segment. Cervical canal includes into the lower uterine segment. It takes place from above to downward. That is the muscle fibers surrounding the internal os are drawn upwards by the retracted upper segment and the cervix images into the or pulls into the lower uterine segment. Then the cervical canal widens at the level of the internal os where the condition of the external os remains unchanged. Here, condition of the external os doesn't have any change. After that, cervical dilatation takes place. Dilatation of the cervix is the process of enlargement of the os, outer os, and lightly closed apparently, opening large enough to for the, or the, for the placenta to pass. Then fetal, as also for the fetal head. Dilatation is measured in centimeters and full dilatation at term equates to about or equals to about 10 centimeter. Then rupture of the membrane. The optimal physiological time for the membrane to rupture spontaneously is at the end of the first stage of labor. After the cervix become fully dilated and no longer supports the bag of four water. This is regarding the physiology of normal 
labor. Next is the physiology of the second stage of labor. It begins with complete cervical dilatation and ends with the delivery of the fetus as we told earlier. In early Paris woman, that is woman who doesn't got pregnant, the second stage should be considered prolonged if exceeds 3 hours. If regional anesthesia is administered or 2 hours in the absence of regional anesthesia. In multiparous woman, that is who had undergone or had given delivery or birth to one or two more than two babies that is multiparous. So in multiparous women the second stage should be considered prolonged if it exceeds two hours with regional anesthesia or one hour without it. Next is the physiology of third stage of labor. The period between the delivery of the fetus and the delivery of the placenta and the fetal membranes. Delivery of the placenta often takes less than 10 minutes but the third stage will last as long as 30 minutes. Next, expected management that involves spontaneous delivery of the placenta. So, the third stage of labor is considered prolonged after 30 minutes and active intervention is commonly considered for third stage of labor. The active management often involves prophylactic administration of oxytocin or other eutronics that is prostaglandins or ergot alkaloids, cord clamping or cord cutting and controlled traction of the umbilical cord. These are the managements. Next regarding mechanism of labor. So far we discussed about what all are the stages of labor. So the normal labor takes place through different different types of mechanism. So let's discuss in detail about what all are the mechanism that is taking place in normal labor. Mechanism of labor include or the mechanism of labor also known as cardinal movements that take place in the normal labor. It involves changes in the position of the fetus head during its passage in labor. These are described in relation to vertex presentation that is presentation of the head. Although labor and delivery occurs in a continuous fashion, the cardinal movements are described as the following seven discrete sequence. First one is engagement, engagement, second one is the descent of the head, third one is the flexion, fourth one internal rotation, fifth extension, sixth one is restitution and external rotation of the shoulder and the last one that is the expulsion of the fetus. So through this cardinal movements or seven steps actually what takes place normal labor takes place. So normal labor to be takes place or to take place in an effective manner these seven cardinal movements is necessary that is what comes under mechanism of labor. So normal labor its mechanism stages of labor these things we have discussed till now. Hope you got a detailed idea regarding this topic and if you have any doubts, please comment on the comment section. Thank you for watching. Bye.